Hello, hello. I am Jeff the Hitman Hall. I am the resident local wrestling purist on Podcast World Order. As you can see here, I am in my palatial estate enjoying some of the finer things in life. That's alcohol free, of course. Nothing but the finest. And tonight we are going to talk a little NXT. So let's start off. Show starts off. You have Dakota Kai. She comes out, cuts a little mini promo on Raquel Gonzalez. She just kind of turn coded on her. And she's just giving you all the information on how she's going to be the new NXT Women's Champion come NXT TakeOver uh, 36. So she's wrestling Saray. It goes 11 minutes and 17 seconds. Uh, pretty good match. Um, Kai got a little bit of offense in early. And then Saray kind of was pushing at the end, but Kai goes, Dakota Kai goes over a big boot to the face of the corner. One, two, three. It's done. Raquel Gonzalez comes out afterwards. Same deal. She's cutting a promo. She's letting her know that come take over. Nothing's going to change. She's still going to be women's heavyweight champion. I enjoyed this. I, I may be more of a Dakota Kai Mark slash lover than most people. Um, so, like I said, I, I enjoyed this. I thought this was good stuff. You know, the, the, the way they're working in, I kind of like this program that they're, that they're uh, going with. Um, after that, we shoot to a segment with Johnny Gargano and Andy Hartwell. Candice LeRae, they're doing their, um, you know, they're at their home and doing their uh, Brady Gargano bunch deal. So Indy Hartwell's gonna go on a date with Dexter Loomis. Loomis comes to the door, he's got roses. Of course, he doesn't speak. So he comes inside, Gargano's giving them the stern dad. Hey, you're gonna take her out. She's gonna have a good time. And she better be home by 10 o'clock. Or maybe 10 30, I can't remember. Pretty sure it was a stern 10 o'clock. And that's kind of that's kind of where they 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 leave that segment. After that, we move on into promo time with Hit Row. They are being the purest that I am, they're in the back of a box truck um, around a drum that's on fire. Not sure what that has to do with anything. Didn't really understand it myself, but they cut a pretty good po uh, get pretty good promo on Legato del Fantasma, you know, letting them know that his time has come and it is just a matter of time. Moving on, the show kind of picked up, um, it was more, not skits and bits, but it was more uh, talking and promos and segments than it, than it necessarily is wrestling. And that's kind of the way these things go for, for uh, NXT. Next, strolling down to the ring in all his glory is Ilya Dragunov. And folks, ladies and gents, if you don't know who this guy is, I guess you've been living under a rock, but he is absolutely gold. He's a great worker. He's a really good wrestler. And if you haven't seen any of his stuff, I assume you have, but if you haven't seen any of his stuff, uh, definitely you, you, you want to check this guy out. So he's cutting a promo on Walter, letting him know at TakeOver 36. His time has come and you'll get Walter dragging off too. And he's going to be winning the belt from Walter. I and mean, we'll see, excuse me, Walter, make sure I get it correct. As he's doing that uh, mid promo, oh, Pete Dunn comes on out, the bruiser weight. Well, I'm telling you he's a bruiser weight. I don't want to slight him. So he comes out and he lets them know, hey man, listen, I've been carrying this, this, uh, NXT UK on my back and by him being the heavyweight champion and the long reign that he went on that, you know, he, he, he should be thankful to Pete Dunne. Well, those guys, they start to get nose to nose. You know what happens there? They, you know, are about to wrap each other up. And then after that, you're going to get a match tonight. So you got Dunn calling out Dragon off, and that's going to be your main event. And we're going to, we're going to get into that. Uh, we're going to get into that later. Next, you have L.A. Knight. And he's backstage with Cameron Grimes, his, uh, his butler, you know. So Cameron Grimes, you know, doing butler things for L.A. Knight. They cut a quick little promo and the right on the turnaround, 
you're getting a match with LA Knight and Chase. Chase is a jobber and he has no last name. So LA Knight does his thing. He takes care of Mr. Chase and that runs you about 27 seconds to the T, to my stopwatch at least. Um, after that, Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man, his music hits. He strolls on down to the ring and he's letting LA Knight know. Well, he's telling he's he's telling Cameron Grimes, like, hey, you man, you know, you shouldn't do this anymore. You don't have to do this. You've done your time, you've taken this too far. And and LA LA Knight is letting him know that, hey, this is what he signed up for. He's beat him twice. So those two kind of start to come to a head and Mr. DiBiase tells him, hey, you know, you should wrestle him one more time at uh, TakeOver 36. And LA Knight says, you know what? I will do. And he says, and if I win, uh, if I win, not only is Grimes going to be my butler, Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase is going to be my butler as well. And if you guys know Teddy, Teddy said he's got more than enough money and he said he's fine, he'll do it. So at TakeOver, you're going to have L.A. Knight, Cameron Grimes. I believe this is three. And you're, it's also going to be on the back of uh, Ted DiBiase um, looking to be this man, uh, this man's butler. All right, moving along. After that, we kind of parlay into Gigi Dolan. And she has her own little video package, putting everybody on notice. Like, hey, there's a new sheriff in town. And she's ready to rock and roll and, and take the women's championship from Raquel Gonzalez. Right? And I guess nobody's safe. So after that, strolls on down to the ring. She has a match with Amira Miller. Um, unfortunately, she's a jobber. Well, get, getting the jobber treatment. Uh, that match goes two minutes and 50 seconds, and you got Gigi Dolan uh, going over. And, and her, uh, if, if you haven't seen her finish, finish is really good. It's like an abdominal stretch bomb. It's like a she's there and she kind of flips and turns and plants her. Um, it was really unique. I, I hadn't seen anything like that before. Uh, like I said, it was kind of a squash match, but I enjoyed the, the, the finish. It was, it was pretty good. Uh, after that, Cole and O'Reilly. So these two bulls are looking to, to lock up at takeover. So the ring's full of security guards, of course, you know, so nothing gets out of hand. Um, the guys come on down there and they're in the ring and they're, they're, they're cutting promos on each other. Cole saying O'Reilly's, you know, always been a wannabe Cole and Cole always beats O'Reilly, you know, so they're down there with uh, William Regal and or, or Regal's supposed to ha give them this third stipulation. So it's two regular matches and then two falls, two out of three falls. And then they have a little schmaz, a little bust up, you know, you know how they go. Security's jumping on them. And William Regal says, I will decide the last fall. And the last fall will be a cage match. So you're going to get that at uh, NXT TakeOver 36. Um, oh, yes. Next, you are going to have... so. The semi, I guess, would be technically the semifinal of the NXT breakout tournament. You have Odyssey Jones versus Trey Baxter. This one went two minutes and 45 seconds. Um, Odyssey Jones looks really, really good. His work is good. I like him in ring. Uh, he kind of sound. He kind of has the whole package for me. I, I mean, I mean, I, not that he's young. I don't know his age, but. He seems like with the right backing, and I, I, I have a feeling they're going to go with him. He, the crowd's kind of behind him. I have a feeling that they're going to go with him in the final of uh, this breakout tournament. So I'm interested to, to see that. He's almost like uh, Keith Lee, uh, but Keith Lee in the sense of where he just kind of, not that he has more personality, but he's more talkative and he's not as robotic as Keith Lee talks. So uh, again, like I really enjoy this guy. And I think if booked correctly, um, they really, really, really could have something um, with him. So like I said, I'm interested to, to, to see that. 
there we go to another backstage segment. So we have Kushida and Malcolm Bivens coming out of uh, William Regal's office. And they give you like a little quick cam and they slide out of there. And William Regal comes out and tells the announcer that it will be next week is going to be Kushida for the cruiserweight uh, championship against who was this guy's name? Oh, someone from Diamond Mine. I I boggled it. I I couldn't see it. So, moving on, we have Boa versus Drake Maverick, and that took two minutes and fifty five seconds. Uh, same deal, kind of a squash match here. Boa um, comes out with Yim and and then no, sorry, not not me and Yim, Mei Ying, Mei Ying, and this uh, this new package of Boa is very very interesting. Um, I've been digging this and I kind of enjoy it. And they came out and did the whole facade, and she came out and sat down kind of in a chair, and he's become you know her right hand man, and. I really, 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 really enjoy. I think the again, if kind of like Odyssey Jones, if they book this guy correctly, then they may have something. And, you know, I'm I tend to be harsh on WWE. And, well, well, hell, I tend to be harsh on everything. That's kind of my bit. But this is I enjoyed this a lot. Um, and again, if, if pushed correctly, this 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 could be could be nice. Um, at the end of the match, you get like a miss from Mei Ying to um, Drake Maverick, and Boa hits him with the kick, and that is Tali Tali kick, and that is the end of it. We cut from that match to more segments. Uh, this is the it. This is the other part of it. This is Indy Hartwell and. Dexter Loomis on their date, and they are at a fine established establishment restaurant. She orders a cake, and Johnny Gargano, wrestling purist here, Johnny Gargano comes out in a mustache because you're not supposed to know it's him. And he's and he brings the cake, and he's trying to get to the bottom of this date. This date, excuse me. So lo and behold, what do you have? You have a schmaz where the cake ends up in Dexter Loomis's face. And Indy Hartwell says, don't worry. She enjoys dessert. And she looks, she looks a little piece off of his face and she goes to re reach in and give him a little kiss, but blocks the camera out right before she, she does it. Again, not my deal, not anything I like, but you know, WWE, wrestling purist here. Next segment, Samoa Joe and Karrion Cross. This whole thing that you know that they're leading up to would be great. Well, let me let me finish. Cross and Joe, you know, working together is just going to be great. Samoa Joe has probably been maybe the most underused or misused guy in WWE the past five years. I mean, they just managed not to book this guy correctly. So they're running this whole angle, and it comes back around. Now he's back and he's putting people to sleep cross and he's reinstated uh, by William Regal and cross is saying, you know, he's just another challenger and all this is good. This is great stuff from WWE. The only thing, the only problem I have with it is if I didn't see cross lose to Jeff Hardy in a squash match, you know, two weeks before, then this would mean something. I just don't like the booking of, two guys that are badass, you know, ready to do battle. And your NXT champion just lost to, to Jeff Hardy, you know? So you, you're, you're booking Joe, like he may or may not win when you just saw Cross lose to Hardy. And I know I'm, I'm beating a dead horse here, but it just drives me insane on, on some of the stuff that, that WWE does and, and the booking. Anyway, now we will save the best for last. Last, excuse me. You have Pete Dunn versus Ilya Dragunov. And this match is great. It went 13 minutes. And again, if, if you're obviously aware of these two guys, if you haven't, again, you've been living under a rock. 
but just absolutely great wrestling from top to bottom. This match didn't have any weirdness. This match didn't have any hokiness. There wasn't any weird spots or wondering why this was done or, um, well, they did this because it was fun. No, this match was great from top to bottom and I really, really enjoyed it. And I think we need more wrestling like this across all brands, not just WWE specific. So with that being said, Dunn goes over here with a little help from Walter. He comes out, they play his music, he hits the stage, you know, kind of kind of distracts uh uh Dragon off a little bit. So Dunn scores the win. And after that, Walter kind of jumps in there to to finish him off. Dunn kind of looks at him and you know just you know thanks thanks for nothing to Walter. Dunn t- uh jumps up out of there. Walter goes in there to, to, to finish the job on Dragonoff, and Dragonoff pops up, hits him with the Torpedo Moscow on Walker, I mean, on, on Walter. He slings out the ring, and that's kind of the end. And you and you're 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 left with with Dragonoff holding the belt up um at the end of the uh of the show. So all signs leading to takeover 36 um, on a whole, minus the Johnny Gargano stuff. This wasn't a bad. This wasn't a bad uh, show. I mean, there's stuff here and there that I that that, that I, I like to nitpick. Um, but you know, that's that that's just me. I, I'm the purist. But yeah, all in all, um, a really good show. I would suggest tuning in. I think uh, Takeover 36 um, should be good. You know, with some of the storylines that that they're continuing and kind of moving into, I'm really really interested to see this Joe and cross i just hope joe goes over and they do right by him in this long circled around way of of booking him you know he was fired but he kind of kayfabe wasn't fired or really was fired and he was hired again by regal to be you know the manager enforcer and now he's not you know now he's not already so again like that's fine i I just i just hope they uh i hope they 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 do they do right by him so that's kind of all the show, uh, all the show I, 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 I have for you guys, guys and gals. Um, again, tune in to all the PWO content. These guys are working hard. Everybody's working hard. Enjoy wrestling. Watch old wrestling. Watch new wrestling. Watch something that you haven't seen before, somewhere in between. Um, and that's about it. And you guys know what we say on the show, or what I do at least. If you're not going to put yourself over, nobody else wills. Nobody else will. And I'm the wrestling purist, Jeff the Hitman Hall. Have a good night.